afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure to be invited to take part in this um, important conference that you're organizing in Greece this weekend. My name is Steve Jones. I'm an IPF patient. I lived with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis for eight years uh, <clears throat> and uh, until 2016, when I was very fortunate to receive a lung transplant. Since that time, I've been a, an, a, well, an energetic advocate for people pay living with pulmonary fibrosis throughout Europe, and I'm currently the president of the European Pulmonary Fibrosis Federation. We all know what a devastating disease pulmonary fibrosis is, both for the patient and for their family and friends. It's a dreadful disease. It's an isolating disease. And organizations like the Hellenic Association for Pulmonary Fibrosis, like my own home organization, Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis in the UK, we play a very important role in helping patients to reduce their sense of isolation and to have voice um, with healthcare systems and decision makers to try and improve healthcare, improve care for patients living with, with pulmonary fibrosis. I'm going to, in this brief talk, just give a little overview on EUPFF, EUPFF, the European Pulmonary Fibrosis Federation, and our work. EUPFF was started um, uh, only 2016, just seven or eight years ago. And in that time, we've come a very long way to becoming, we hope, we, is, we aspire to be the voice of the pulmonary fibrosis patient and their families in Europe. Fine, so excuse me for that problem. Uh, EUPFF is very much a patient-led organization. As I say, we were set up in 2016. Patients living with all types of pulmonary fibrosis come under our purview, under our oversight and, and support, not just those with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. We are a membership organization. We have 22 pulmonary fibrosis patient organizations from 18 different European countries in our membership. And we're doing our best to grow the number more as we bring in all countries in Eastern and Southeastern Europe where so far there is no national patient organization. We are run by an annual general meeting of the membership and the annual general meeting elects an executive board of seven people, which then in turn elects the president. So we're a very democratic organization and almost all the members of our executive board are either patients or carers. We all have lived experience of this devastating disease. But we also have a scientific advisory board. 20 of the leading doctors and scientists in Europe are members of our scientific advisory board. So when we have a, a something we need to know more information about, when we need a scientific opinion on something, these um, scientists and doctors are there to help. But on the other hand, when they are doing research, we're also there to help make sure the patient voice is listened to by scientists and doctors you know, researching new treatments for pulmonary fibrosis. We are funded as an organization largely by pharma companies who become sponsors, which covers our core costs and, and or they fund specific activities. Our annual income is round about 400,000 euros a year. Excuse me. Um, we, our aim and mission, our vision my vision personally and our vision is the sustained improvement in the quality of life and life expectancy of all those living with pulmonary fibrosis. Ultimately, and hopefully not too far in the future, we want to be able to stop this disease. We want to be able to say when somebody comes along and is diagnosed, I'm sorry, we can't cure you, but we can stop the disease progressing. And that's my, my personal aim. I hope within you know, the next five to 10 years, we will be able to stop pulmonary fibrosis for, for many pulmonary fibrosis patients. Our mission, as I said, is to be the voice of pulmonary fibrosis patients in Europe. We seek to raise awareness, to educate healthcare professionals, to campaign for <clears throat> uh, improved treatments and care, to fund and facilitate research, 
and to support our member organizations like the Hellenic Association for, for Pulmonary Fibrosis. Our activities can be divided into six streams. As I said, we do a lot of awareness raising. We have an active communications and social media presence throughout the year, but we have a special big effort every September during Pulmonary Fibrosis Month to really get ourselves into uh, national newspapers across Europe, to get us into the media and to get pulmonary fibrosis understood more by healthcare decision makers in particular. We see ourselves, secondly, as a source of reliable information. We have a good website that you can turn to. We run a webinar series, which I know many of you have taken part in or listened to those webinars through generous um, co-translation uh, facilities, which, which your organization has provided. And we run a summit, which I'll come back to shortly every two years, a patient summit in Europe. We campaign, number three and five, we campaign to improve pulmonary fibrosis treatment in Europe. And in doing that, we collaborate with and try, seek to influence organizations like the European Medicines Association, other lung um, disease group, groupings, and the European Commission. Um, a major thing for us is to support our patients. We are worried that many of our patient organizations need strengthening, particularly in matters of policy and how to influence the government to bring about change. And I mean, we've talked a lot with Spiro and other members of your organization about what's needed to do in Greece, particularly over some really pressing problems like, like access to oxygen. Um, and finally, and I think this is a very important thing that I spend a lot of my time on, is we are try to make sure that the patient voice is heard in research. At the moment, around the world, there are over 40 trials, clinical trials for new treatments, new drugs for pulmonary fibrosis in process. We try to make sure the patient voice is heard in those trials. We are involved in the design of the trials. We are involved in helping to recruit people for the trials and in disseminating the findings afterwards. So we work very closely with pharma companies. We work very closely with academic researchers. And it's absolutely essential that we all do our best to take part in and support clinical trials, because it's only through clinical trials that we will get the new medicines and the new treatments that we need. Um, another point I'd just like to raise is that, as I said, every two years, we run a European Pulmonary Fibrosis Patient Summit, bringing together patients, carers, doctors, other healthcare professionals, researchers, your regulators from the European Medicines Agency and others, bringing it all together to discuss the issues which are important to pulmonary fibrosis patients. Issues on person-centered care, on policy, and on patient advocacy. Now, the next one is going to be from the 26th, put it in your diaries now, the 26th to the 28th of April next year, 2024, in Barcelona. Um, we've got a, a reasonably priced hotel. We hope that very much that as many of you as possible will be able to come across from Greece and take part in the, in the proceedings. And if enough of you come, we'll make sure that we have translation, interpretation into Greek so that you can play a, a full part in, in the meeting. So don't forget, April next year, you can find out more about it on our, on our website. Finally, I would like to just you know, congratulate you on the fantastic work you do in promoting pulmonary fibrosis and in supporting patients in Greece. I think the um, I'm amazed at how the Hellenic Association of Pulmonary Fibrosis has grown over the six years since I first met Spiro. Um, it's come on enormously, and you're a really great example to other organizations in other countries about what can be achieved with a small budget. But, you know, organizations that have grown the fastest to meet the needs of the patients and their families are organizations like Action for Pulmonary Fibrosis in the UK, the Irish Lung F Fibrosis Association, the Norwegian Group. There are a number of examples across Europe where they've grown even faster than you have. And they've done so, I think, and I know it's not easy in different countries, it's easy or difficult, but it's um, they've done so because their members, patients, their families, and their friends 
sometimes you know patients have children and grandchildren have done events to raise money to donate to the organization so for example this picture here shows action for pulmonary fibrosis we raised probably 40 percent of our income comes from people in the community doing fundraising activities to give money, donate money to the organization so that we can provide the services that we provide. So it's people going out, the, this group here had all jumped out of an airplane in or with parachutes on, a first parachute jump. Other people have climbed mountains. They've done 500 kilometer cycle rides. They've done a range of different things. Sometimes they've just organized coffee mornings but they've done things to raise money for action for pulmonary fibrosis. And we'd be very happy to work with the Hellenic Association for Pulmonary Fibrosis. Maybe we could have a partnership. Maybe you could come across to the UK, some of you, to see how we do fundraising. And maybe some of our people could come out to see you and you know, advise you and also learn from you about how well you do things that we could learn from. So maybe we should have a twinning going on between the Greek Association and the, the UK one. But if you prefer the Irish one or the Norwegian one, that's fine too. So it's been an absolute pleasure being here today. I hope I've seen the program. It looks like a great program ahead of you. So enjoy the, the seminar, the conference today. And I look forward to continuing to work closely with your organization and with our Greek friends in the future. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.